Federation of Indian Industry, ASOCHAM, and the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Thank you very much for uh, bringing us all together today and for being such gracious hosts and for driving this event. We truly appreciate your hard work to make this a reality. Thank you. Thanks also uh, to uh, organizations that I can you know, assure everyone are actually for distinct organizations uh, that uh, do and fulfill each of them really important duties. The Canada, Indus, in, the Canada India Business Council, the Indo-Canadian Business Chamber, the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce, and the Canada India Foundation for collaborating on this important program. Thank you, my friends. There are almost a thousand of us here today, which I think speaks to the depth of the relationship between our two countries. I'm honored that you've made this event a priority. Thank you for being here today. As many of you know, I'm here this week to strengthen the historic ties between Canada and India, while also pursuing opportunities for economic growth and partnership. Et je suis en bonne compagnie. 6 ministres, 14 députés et un sénateur se sont joints à moi dans le cadre de, de ce voyage. Et bien que j'apprécie vraiment leur compagnie, je dois avouer que le fait d'être ici avec Sophie et les enfants veut dire encore plus pour moi. Vous savez, quand j'étais enfant, je suis venu en Inde avec mon père qui effectuait une visite de travail à l'époque. Mes trois enfants étaient donc de l'avis que c'était maintenant à leur tour d'accompagner leur père. The hospitality extended to my family and me has been phenomenal and much appreciated. I think we can score this as something that Canada and India have in common. Our people are always, always ready to offer a warm welcome to friends and strangers alike. And that's something I want to talk a bit about today, the similarities between Canada and India and how we can build on that common ground for the future. Canada and India are countries committed to pursuing and upholding democracy. And that really comes as no surprise. We're the two largest democracies in the world, one by size, and one by population. <laughs> That's a pretty important value that we share, and one that will keep our friendship strong. Similarly, we both also value diversity and the many benefits that it brings to our societies. I say all the time that Canada is strong not in spite of our differences, but because of them. And my friends, the same can be said of India. Diversity of religion, gender, lived experience, these things enrich us and make our communities stronger and more resilient. We know that the same old opinions from the same old voices won't lead to societal or economic growth. If we want to progress as countries and as a global community, we can't just accept or tolerate diversity, we must champion it. And not just because it's the nice thing to do, but because it leads to better decision making and spurs innovation. In Canada, we're doing some pretty phenomenal work in the fields of artificial intelligence and quantum computing. Our biggest cities are becoming globally recognized hubs for innovation. One of those hubs is Toronto, a city where close to 50% of the people who live there were born outside of Canada. I think it's 
fair to say that Toronto is not just Canada's, but one of the world's most multicultural cities. And the ideas and innovation ecosystem that thrives there is producing stellar results. And you're seeing the same thing right here in India. It's just one example. Folks living in the vibrant tech powerhouse of Bengaluru speak many languages and practice many religions. Minister Sajjan was there just a few days ago, visiting with industry leaders in defense. And might I say, for everyone who's felt bad that I haven't made it to every corner of this country, I do intend and hope to come back, but uh, in the meantime, our six ministers scattered across the country and had a much broader reach than just uh, a single visit would have. And I was very pleased to hear glowing reports of what's going on in the India-Canada partnerships right across the country. So thank you, ministers, for all the work you've done in places I haven't been able to get yet. <laughs> My friends, you can't tell me that diversity and innovation are mutually exclusive. On the contrary, there is a real and concrete link there. We see it in Canada, we see it all across India and all around the world. The more we bring together different ideas, different perspectives, challenge each other in the way we think, open ourselves to new ways of doing things, new ways of thinking, the more creative we get in our solutions, the better we are able to solve together the big challenges we are facing. And just as we recognize that diversity is a crucial element of progress, we also recognize that economic growth must benefit all of our people. Trade and growth that lifts up the poor and historically disadvantaged, that's the aim. That's the whole point. We can protect our planet, create better labor standards, and champion the participation of women and young people in the workforce. We can have trade and investment that is both profitable and benefits society. Too many people have been left behind as global commerce has evolved. Canada and India know that our people want, need, and deserve a chance to participate in and benefit from economic growth. C'est une chose que j'entends régulièrement au Canada, y compris de la part de gens qui entretiennent des liens très étroits avec l'aide. Vous avez peut-être entendu dire que 1.4 million de Canadiens ont des origines indiennes. Pour un pays d'environ 36 millions d'habitants, cela représente une part considérable de notre population. Les étudiants venus de l'Inde remplissent nos collèges et nos universités. L'année dernière, on comptait environ 124 000 étudiants indiens sur les campus canadiens. Au cours de l'élection canadienne de 2015, un nombre record de 19 députés de descendance indienne ont été élus à notre Parlement. Et à l'heure actuelle, quatre ministres de notre cabinet sont d'origine indienne. C'est des personnes qui établissent des politiques du Canada au chapitre de la défense, des sciences et de l'innovation, de l'infrastructure, ainsi que des petites entreprises et du tourisme. The diaspora in Canada is very present in our schools, our businesses, and our governments. But we haven't done enough to tap into that network. In the years and decades ahead, we need to capitalize on the incredibly strong people-to-people -people ties we already enjoy? How do we leverage the business and knowledge networks that already exist between our two countries? How do we make sure that Canadians and Indians better share information, better invest, and better cooperate with a shared goal of economic success? Well, my friends, you know it and I know it. As great as this relationship is, we have to grow deepen and broaden our historic friendship. And that's what this week has been all about, engaging with all facets of Indian society. To be competitive in the modern economy, we need to shift from a whole-of-government approach to a whole-of-country approach. This is how we strengthen our ties. This is how we will succeed. I'm going to quote the President and CEO of the CIBC, Cassie Rao 
who said it best. Cassie said, if the Canada-India partnership of the 1950s was built on aid and development, then today it's being built on trade and investment, ideas and innovation. I think that's a pretty succinct way of looking at it. we need to look at where we are and where we're headed. Lately, we've been working hard to better realize the huge economic opportunity between our two countries. There are currently over 400 Canadian companies with a physical presence in India, giants like Magna, McCain, and Linamar. I have no doubt that this number will increase in the years ahead. Just a few days ago, several Indian companies including Tech Mahindra, Infosys, and Tata Consultancy Services, announced major investments in Canadian talent and in Canadian communities. In total, this week's trip has yielded more than a billion dollars in investment between Canada and India. And that billion dollars back and forth will create almost 6,000 high quality jobs for folks back home and many, many good jobs here as well. This is a true vote of confidence from the Indian business community. And the desire for companies around the world to set up shop in Canada makes sense. In case you haven't heard, we're a pretty good place to do business. <laughs> If you're an entrepreneur from another country, the Startup Visa program allows you to come to Canada and build businesses and technologies that are innovative and globally competitive. And if you're already a business owner, the Canadian advantage is huge. Our people are highly educated, our banking and legal systems are incredibly sound, and our trade agreements allow for unparalleled market access to world economies. Add to that a new program called the Global Skills Strategy, which makes it easier for businesses to recruit and bring short, uh, top talent to Canada in short notice. Well, business leaders are looking to us as an essential partner for the future. And as we build on the Canada-India partnership, let's see the tremendous advantages of working together and collaborate whenever and wherever possible for the benefit of both of our countries and all of our citizens. Last year, our countries both marked some big milestones. You celebrated the 70th anniversary of Indian independence, and we celebrated the 100th anniversary of Canadian Confederation. So it's fair to say that for everyone in this room, 2017, it was a pretty big year, but I'm confident that 2018 and the years to come will be even bigger. It is my hope that this trip, in addition to many recent efforts on both sides, has laid the groundwork for stronger engagement between Canada and India. My friends, we are poised to do tremendous things together, so let's be confident about where we're headed together. Canada and India, may our futures be bright, our people united, and our prosperity shared. Thank you very much.